Chris, based on practice today, it appears as though uh, Derek Ryan's going to draw in. Just a, maybe a thought on uh, sort of that change to the lineup and what you're hoping to see out of uh, Derek Ryan. I think both players give us a different element. I think they're both very good hockey players. Both have been playing really good the last couple of weeks. Um, just feel that maybe it gives us a little more energy, fresh legs. Um, that's all. Uh, I think either one of them. But, um, yeah. So, anyways, Derek is playing tonight. And uh, Derek has been playing very well for us the past couple months. And it was difficult not having him in the lineup. But he will be playing tonight. There's an old saying, you don't mess with a winning lineup. Your penalty killing's gone 10 for 10, and Carrick's been part of that. Uh, does that sort of get weighed in to when you're making a decision like that? It can't be an easy decision. You're coming off a 6-1 win. Absolutely. And we think of their role has been very similar. They're going to be our fourth-line centermen. In the penalty kill, they'll be taking those face-offs. Um, but they can also play, you know, typically the same amount of minutes, same kind of role. And we'll just feel that we'll um, make that one adjustment. Uh, Chris, it sounds like they're going to change your goalie and go with Dave Riddick tonight. That just, does that make any difference to your group at all? The most important thing is how we play, how we respond. Uh, from our last game, obviously, we would like to continue winning and really get a big lead on this um, in the series. We have noted some tendencies of how he plays and where he could be um, vulnerable, maybe exposed. But, um, yeah, that might give us a little bit of advantage on the shooters. On, But both their goalies are very capable, good quality goaltenders. We need to play our best. And this is a big swing game, obviously, game four. You guys are – can you get you get to – it's kind of a do-over for you guys after game one. What did you learn in game two that you could maybe use coming off a big win in game three? I think the biggest thing is the um, how the series has gone. You look at the team that's come out with a strong first period has come out with all these um, wins. Um, you know, that's no secret of us losing in the game two. After the first period, it was 3-1, and um, it was, um, you know, we were able to tie it up later, but it just makes our – job a lot harder and I think it'd be very important that we were ready to go in the first period um, you know with um, them being down a game in their building um, we're expecting their best they've been playing so well at home um, they've responded well um, we have to be ready to play at a very high level Chris, just to confirm, uh, Ryan in for Carrick, is that the only lineup change you're going to make tonight? That is. Okay. Um, the special teams on both sides, penalty kill and power play, have been very good for you. Can you explain kind of the value of, of special teams in the playoffs? Like, some, we, we tend to think that uh, there are fewer penalties called. Is it just, um, does that kind of make it more important than maybe even the regular season? Well, so far in this series, and maybe across the league, I'm not sure, but probably in ours, I think we've actually seen more power plays per game than in the regular season. And it's a small sample; it's only three games, but it's so um, so competitive. The the it's such a fine line from winning and losing. It usually comes down to a, a special team goal, and fortunately so far we've done well in that aspect and you know something that we've taken a lot of pride in um, especially the second half of the season with our penalty kill and our power play um, contributing to a lot of our success and going forward in the playoffs whether this is game four or whatever it is game five special teams are always a key very important part of the um, game Zach Hyman called uh, after game three, like the, the penalty kill, like the stories, uh, story of the series, he, he in his mind, um, he talked about the penalty killing, maybe adjustments and um, with Mark Stewart coming in and, and really kind of revamping that early. There's a little bit of a dip and it seems to come back. What, what maybe has changed over the last little while to get you guys maybe back to the spot you were maybe in November or December there? I think the complete team commitment, the guys who are killing, really being connected of when one guy is protecting, one guy's striking, being aggressive and reading off each other. 
And I think that's been really important. Goaltending is always the biggest aspect of uh, a successful penalty kill. And um, the other one is something that doesn't get talked about enough is on penalty kills, how important it is to get your clears. I know it was um, our power play unit loves it when the, the opposition doesn't get the puck out because you all have, you get a second opportunity. But you also get the penalty killers who are, are tired and not as sharp and not as aggressive um, so that you can capitalize. And I think our, our guys have done a really good job on making the appropriate play, whether it's a, a hard rim or a, a share, a short pass, uh, to get those clears.